Good morning, everyone. Can everyone hear me? No. no. Can you hear me now? No. Now? Can you hear this? Yes. Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Okay, thank you for coming. To the resident council meeting that uh, we hope will be very informative for you. We have a very large amount of things to cover this morning. So without further ado, let's let us begin. Roll call for the secretary, please. Would you do that? Yes. I have a different, can you hear this one? Yes. All right, good. Uh, President George Kempner. I'm here. Vice President Anza Thick. Treasurer Wayne Schreifler. Here. I'm the Secretary, Bob Henry, and members at large are Beverly Adair, Here. Karen Doerr, Here. and Pat Niemeyer. Here. All members present. While I'm standing, I will ask for a motion for approval of the minutes of the last month's town hall meeting. I so move. I second. There are no objections. We'll consider it passed. Thank you. Uh, before we go further, I see some, we have some new residents in the audience here today, so I'd like to introduce them. <clears throat> Virginia Lum, would you please raise your hand or stand up? Virginia's a new member. Uh, Pete Darby, I don't know if this is your first meeting or not, but would you raise your hand, please, and stand up? That's Keith Darby. And then the way back in the room, uh, Bud Clapper, would you uh, stand up, please, or raise your hand as Bud? See, there's Roy Peterson. I see him too. Roy is on my left. Thank you for attending. We appreciate your interest in the uh, council meeting. Uh, we'd like to do the officer's report now. So, first off, uh, Wayne Schweifler for the uh, treasurer's report. Treasurer's report is for the month of September. Uh, we had a beginning balance of $11,341.76. Expenses of $99.05. Income of $271. And the ending balance of $11,513.71. Uh, there were just minimal uh, transactions in the month, and $99 was for books for the library. And the income mainly came from the thrift shop, and it was split uh, with $153 going to the uh, holiday gift fund, and uh, the balance going to the scholarship fund. Uh, okay. and that ends that part of the report. Are uh, there any questions? Yes, I don't know whether it's to you, but where did the money come from that was given to the artist that did that darling um, presentation? I what, have no idea. What fund went there? I have no idea. They did not come from the council, however. Okay, so but maybe a watermark then? It was a watermark. It was a watermark. Martin said it came from all watermark. Good. It was really well. That was well earned. It was all started by Vanessa. <laughs> yeah, and it took her a long time to yes. get enough people to participate. Uh, I have one other item, uh, which is on here. And that is, uh, I'm going to ask the council to authorize transfer $1,000 from the Happy Hour Fund to the Library Fund. Uh, it's, that's the purpose of the Happy Hour Fund. And so uh, we need to cover expenses for the next year. And so uh, I'm going to make a motion that we make that transfer. Second. Seconded. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, then pass, and then I will arrange the transfer. Thank you. Thank 
Okay, the uh, special events committee, Gary Gold, will you please come up? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thank you for coming. Uh, I attended the special events committee meeting that was held on October 3rd. There were only four um, members present. Those that weren't were excused, and that was uh, Jan Burrock, Carolyn Kaiser, Beverly Finch, and uh, Marilyn Montgomery. Um, we had kind of a, a lively meeting. <laughs> uh, we discussed the Great California Shakeout, which is coming up. And we came up with a suggestion, because we had all sorts of questions, that maybe a fireman could be asked to come, maybe not that day, but after the shakeout to answer any questions we have about earthquakes and fires. Um, we also discussed the evening movie time, which is very awkward time. And um, the reason it is set at that time is because there is no employee who can work the equipment. So Vanessa is going to talk to maintenance and see if maintenance can first of all put the player in a more um, convenient place and then instruct residents on how to work it. Also to um, have simple instructions next to it so maybe anybody can use it. Um, we came up with new ideas. One of them was a special or senior Olympics with another community. Which, it might be kind of fun. <laughs> Maybe we could get bragging rights. Um, also, we Vanessa discussed having this fall separate block parties for the 500 casitas, the 600 casitas, and the um, each floor of the town center. There would be barbecue, food, drinks, happy times, and you'd get to meet your neighbors. Um, I just learned that happy hour has been changed from November 8th to November 1st because on November 8th, there will be poll, this will be a polling place for voting. <laughs> um, and as a reminder, there will be on October 27th, tomorrow, Palm Desert is putting on a concert in the park. There are 12 available seats in the bus. You will be bused there at 5 o'clock. And um, the music, I understand, is the 50s and 60s. What's your date? Karen, what date is that? Tomorrow, October 27th. No, the 20th. The 27th. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, Thursday, October 27th. Next Thursday. Karen, they have to sign up for it. I thought I said that, but there is a sign-up sheet in the book, um, so hopefully everybody will sign up for it. There are at least 12 people. Also, on October 30th, that's a Sunday, there is the El Paseo Golf Cart Parade, which I understand is a lot of fun to see all the very nicely decorated golf carts and this is at 12 noon there are 12 reserved seats for us and box lunches and that is also a sign up activity so 
hopefully everybody, or at least 12 people, will get out and go have some fun. Um, we adjourn the meeting, and the next meeting will be held on November 7th at 11 o'clock in the Delta Dixon uh, Lounge. Questions? What about the Halloween party? Uh, the trunk and yes, trunk and treat. Treat. Um, from what I understand, that's still going on. We don't have much information on it, um, other than residents are asked if there's anybody out there who would like to use their car. Um, the facility will help you decorate the trunk. Um, I believe there will be hot dogs and hamburgers in the parking lot. I'm just not sure of a time. Do you know the time, Cheryl? I don't. 4 p.m. Four. Thank you. And the neighborhood is invited. Yes, and the neighborhood is invited. So I'm sure masks will be mandatory except when you're in need. Um, also, there is a candy um, bin out of the main lobby that um, be sure to donate. Any more questions? I'd just like to mention, because we were too late to get it into your meeting, that the opera program will be starting this coming Sunday, 2 o'clock at the theater, a showing of Madame Butterfly, and our director explains the opera, tells you about the author, makes it all very interesting <coughs> and very understandable. So I hope a lot of people will come to see that this coming Sunday at 2 o'clock. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, Angela, will you give us information on the building and grounds, please? Good morning. Good morning. The building and grounds committee met on October 11th. And the committee members, Alan Winterbotham, Dan Austin, Roger Burroughs, Sharon Goodman, Wayne Schweifler, acting secretary, and myself were present. The window washing was completed and is next scheduled for March and April of 23. The Casita rooftop drains were cleaned, and that's completed. The North Gate remote Replacement is also completed and extras have been ordered in case you <laughs> didn't get one or you need uh, one in the future. The popcorn machine was installed in the movie theater and another has been ordered for the W Lounge. The large pool cushions replaced uh, were replaced and the 500 seated ones are on an order still. Uh, the movie theater marquee was expected. I can't see whether we've got the new one out there. Not, 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 not yet. yet. Not yet. Not yet. I'm aware. The exterior lighting check was scheduled, will be scheduled this week. Bids have been solicited for hall wallpaper. There's no scalping this year before the receiving due to water conservation. Interviews have been scheduled for additional staff in the um, maintenance for end of week coverage plus any extras needed during the week. Lou Agave is to attend to our overgrown palm trees and missing shrubs, and that should be occurring this week or next week. The Casita grills are going to be checked to be in, see if they're in operating working order. There was a, a mosquito problem and um, evidently by cleaning and repairing two of the fountains, that should uh, help in that problem. 
there are some tentative, tentative budget items which include painting of our building exterior and uh, the flooring in the auditorium. In the north lobby, CZ's Cafe and Green Room. There will be two new grocery carts delivered. I guess one is missing and one needed repairs. And also um, a bid for the driveway and parking lot repair since that amount has changed since uh, needed a great, not upgrade, but a, a bigger amount. Our next meeting is Tuesday, November 8th. And a reminder that after our meeting, uh, minutes are posted on the bulletin boards if you would like to keep in uh, touch. Any questions for building and grounds? I have one. I mean, I'm sure lots of people are curious how we lost a very capable Alex. Um, would you like to address that? Yeah, I will. Um, Alex is gone. The information I got was that he uh, accepted a position closer to his uh, uh, house. So that's the only information I have available. Yeah. Okay. Martin, you had a question? Yeah. Uh, what is the status of the uh, rodents issue? What is the status of the rodent issue? The information I received was that uh, uh, management met with Orkin, yeah. and they are going to, uh, Orkin's going to go through the uh, units and determine where perhaps the rodents are entering those units at and fix those. Uh, if there's any holes or spaces that they're coming into, uh, hopefully they will be discovered and plucked up. Yeah. That's the only information we have as of right now, but I'm sure there'll be more forthcoming. Oh, and Ron is just uh, gonna give us more information. <laughs> yeah, so Orkin, Orkin was here Friday and did an assessment of the exterior of the building. They came back yesterday with an additional team. The, the first step is in eliminating any way that they're getting into the building. And they're gonna to try to uh, remediate all of that before they go into the apartments. If we, did, we can't stop them from getting in the building, we won't be able to stop them from going to the apartment. So they're adding additional base stations on the exterior of the building. Um, and about a third more than what they have right now. And once they've completed that, they're gonna look at um, some voids in the stucco where they might be coming in, and any trees where they could be climbing to get onto the roof and finding their way in. So it's a, it's a big deal on the outside. And once they've done that, then they'll move inside and start going apartment to apartment. Any other questions? Yes, Jane. Did we lose a large tree? Yeah, we lost a large tree, as everyone probably has discovered already. Did you see uh, it? We uh, had some pretty severe winds that I'm sure took it out. Yeah. Where was that? Where that was, was in the corner of the uh, 500s, Casitas, and the, the uh, northwest corner. The north, yeah, it would be the northwest corner. 510. 510, yeah, outside of 510. Jeannie? Uh, Ron, do you know if Orkin is going to actually plug the hole and get the switch there? No, our, our staff will be doing that. They're going to identify the issues and then our staff will fix them. It's coming from outside, I think, or, or one of those rodents uh, wants to get out of here. It's probably construction up, upstairs. Maybe it's construction. Yeah, it could be construction of that building. Wow. Any other questions as far as we have? Are we going to be aware that they're coming, that, so that we will be there? Yes. Oh, thank you. You'll be notified uh, before they arrive. Any other questions as far as the rodents are concerned? Good. Pat, would you give us the dining services, please? Morning. Can you hear me? Okay, the dining service is met on October 5th 
and we had um, quite a few people at our meeting, and uh, some guests, and we met to to uh, to, to to learn to learn about our new service director, <laughs> Sal Barrera. And he gave a very good presentation and talked about what he was going to do and menus. But his services are, he ended his services here. And I don't know the name of why, what's your why, but anyhow, we have to find a new dining services director. Are there any questions? Is Ron still here to tell us? Is who? Ron still here? <laughs> no, he left. <laughs> but, um, well, you know, as always, we can't go into personnel issues. And um, the only thing I can say is that I had nothing to gain by him leaving. And, um, but it's was necessary. So that's where we'll be. So our next meeting will be November 7th. Any other questions for Pat? Any services? Thank you, Pat. <coughs> uh, we have some uh, reports now that are going to come from special uh, committees. And the first committee uh, that we're going to talk about. Uh, I've asked uh, the nominating election committee, which was headed up by Bill Koenig, uh, Alan Winterbottom and uh, Marilyn Checkman were on his committee. And uh, I'd like for you to say a few words, Bill, on how you accomplished uh, what you did. Please. Thank you, George. The button. Oh, ah, I think we found it. <laughs> okay. Uh, with our new bylaws that uh, have been enacted earlier this year, the uh, nominating committee had uh, some very specific responsibilities to do. And so uh, we went uh, and accomplished everything uh, accordance, in accordance with the new bylaws and, of course, with the uh, capable help of uh, Alan Winterbotham and Marilyn Sheckman. I want to thank them for their uh, cooperation and uh, willingness to do the job. Um, what we did was uh, we met, and our bylaws require us to uh, interview uh, both the new uh, people that uh, are interested in uh, being elected to the board and the incumbents. So uh, represented a little different situation this year and, and a bit of a challenge. So what we did was uh, with the incumbents, we, uh, we asked them what they thought they accomplished and what their goals were for this year. And I think uh, it looks like we've got a very exciting year ahead of us uh, in accordance with what their goals are. And uh, of course, we know what they accomplished this year with the Constitution and the new member at large situation with uh, all of the committees, so uh, I think we're, uh, we're headed to a, a really good year, and uh, our nominating committee was really excited about the uh, candidates that we're about to propose. Uh, so, without further ado, what we'll do is uh, our secretary will make available to you within the coming week uh, the resumes and all of the information that I'll read from today. Uh, so you can look forward to getting that by email or look for a posting on the uh, resident bulletin board. Uh, for president, uh, we're nominating George Kempner for vice president. And George, of course, is an incumbent. Um, for vice president, we're nominating Don Hoffmeister, uh, who will be new to the board. Uh, for treasurer, uh, Wayne Schweifler, who has done a capable job for the last couple of years. Uh, for Secretary Bob Wintery, who's also uh, currently on the board and has done a wonderful job as Secretary. Uh, member at large, Building and Grounds, will be Angela Fick, who very capably filled in this year uh, for that position. 
Uh, member at large for dining services, Pat Niemeyer, who even with all the problems, wants to uh, continue in that position. <laughs> <laughs> we, we wish her well and want to support everything she does there. Uh, uh, for uh, member at large wellness, now wellness is brand new, brand new committee that uh, has just recently been formed, uh, actually will be formed this year. Uh, we're nominating Beverly Adair, who is an incumbent and was uh, on the scholarship committee last year. Uh, member at large for special events uh, will be Mar Margot Schweifler, who has been chair of the special events committee for the last two years. And did it stop again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, well, I might have to talk a little louder or shake it or something. But uh, Margot, uh, uh, of course, uh, has been uh, on the uh, committee as chair, but not on the council, so now she will be officially on the council. And member at large for the scholarship committee, uh, we're nominating Judy Barna. Okay, we respect and respectfully submit this report. Thank you very much for uh, all the work you've done. We can't hear you. Thank you for uh, all the work that you've done in your committee. And those bios of all these individual names that Bill has just uh, uh, told you about, they will be sent out email to you. They'll also be posted on the bulletin boards and a copy in the library. And Bob Winnery will take care of that. Uh, are there any questions in regards to this process? Okay, moving forward, uh, we have now, we, we asked a few months ago, I asked to have a special committee uh, geared towards surveying the residents, the new residents which had moved in from August of uh, 2021 to August of 2022. We started this committee and the committee was uh, going to do the surveys of these individuals and come back and give you a report on what these residents suggested that might be done for future new residents moving into the Colada. Uh, Beverly Adair was appointed uh, chairperson of that committee and she will now give you the results of the report. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. We can't hear you. If you're in the back, can you hear yeah. what you raise your hand? We can't hear you. Hear me? Uh, I'll try again. That's it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Judy, way in the back, can you hear me? Okay. Well, as George just indicated, this committee was appointed, and I was lucky enough to be appointed as a chairperson, in order to talk to the new residents August 21 through August 22, because there have been a lot of concerns that have been voiced about problems that they had moving in, and several of them had voiced suggestions that could be done that would make life much better. Is this, how about this? That's good. I won't move. <laughs> I'm only going to summarize. Same thing. Mr. Breezy. How about this? Yeah. <laughs> I'm only going to summarize our findings. Those of you who received the resident council emails will have our full report attached to the minutes of this meeting when you get them by email. The full report and the minutes will also be pinned on the bulletin boards and they will be filed in the library. 
very important to acknowledge in the beginning that some of these residents that moved in during that year only gave us positive feedback. They feel they were properly informed at every stage of the way, both by sales and marketing and by the Carlotta staff. They were satisfied with their move in, their orientation was good, and they really had no suggestions. So keep in mind, there, there were people who experienced absolutely no problems and they got along really well. Other residents' experiences had not been as positive. So this report gives the opinions and suggestions of those residents in an attempt to provide a better result for our new residents who will be moving in in the future. It's our hope that the residents and Carlotta management will rejoice in the positive comments and will take to heart the suggestions for improvement. We organize these suggestions into three time frames. Prior to move in, move in, settling in. Okay, are you with me still? Talk closer to the mic. Better. Is this better? Yes. Yeah. Under prior to move-in suggestions, we dealt with the following situations. Requests for documented financial information. Suggestions to pass along to the Carlotta staff that they should confer with the recommended Carlotta Moving Company and a number of situations involving unit remodeling. So that's prior to move-in. Move-in category, we dealt with topics, apartments and casitas not fully ready, even though the move-in approval had been given to the residents. And essential information that would really have made move-ins more helpful to the residents. Under the settling in category, we have suggestions involving tours, the resident handbook, the need for a staff directory, orientation in Carlotta management, the need for a map of our community, and some better signage. And what relates to all of us, the need to be good neighbors. As you all know, we no longer have the ambassador welcoming program working. And it's much more difficult for these new residents to assimilate into our community. Some new residents do not even meet their nearby neighbors. So it really falls on all of us to be good ambassadors. Stop in and introduce yourself to your new neighbors. Ask them in for coffee. Invite them to go to an activity. Put yourself in their shoes and you will be so happy that you did. But we all know there are some of you who do that already. You go out of your way to meet new neighbors. We know what you do and it's really greatly appreciated. So those of you who moved in between August 2021 and August 2022, and some of you were in the audience, and who contributed your opinions and your suggestions for this report, a very sincere 
Thank you. Hopefully this report adequately conveys your suggestions for future improvement and will result in a better move-in process for future residents. Carlotta Management, are you listening? <laughs> this is a wake-up call. Please do not take our suggestions lightly. Future move-ins need to experience easier and less stressful move-in experiences. Please do what you can to make that happen. Thank you so much to all of you who have listened and hopefully have a feeling for what this committee has done. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them for you. But keep in mind, you will be able to see the full report and it will make a lot more sense to you that way. Okay, oh, way in the back. Uh, hold on just a second till we get a microphone to you. Who has a question? Way in the back. Why was the ambassador program discontinued? Oh, actually, you have a person standing right next to you that can probably answer that for you. <laughs> I'll, I'll take that question. The question, repeat, the question asked was regarding our former ambassador program. Yes, Marlene, thank you for that question. I think a lot of people are wondering what happened to the ambassador program. I'm not sure when that program originally started. The earliest that I am aware of, Bobby Ferguson was the she was the complete committee for that committee. She didn't have any support. Bobby, at some point, realized that she needed to pass the torch to someone else. And I picked it up. Thank you, Bill. It was a very difficult decision to stop the work that the welcoming committee was doing. Uh, several months ago, we rebranded Ambassador to be called the welcoming committee. We thought that that might sound a little less pretentious, uh, maybe wouldn't sound like so much work would be required. <laughs> it, it didn't, but we, we kind of like the welcoming committee. I think someone even recommended a, we could be called the welcome wagon. <laughs> At any rate, it wasn't too long after that that the work became overwhelming. There just was too much for too few people to do. I see a lot of you in the audience and you were ambassadors, you were welcoming sponsors, and I know that you are continuing to do the same work and that is very much appreciated. But until there is a time that a committee can be formed and all the work is not on the shoulders of such a few number of residents. There can't be a committee. It's very obvious from some of these interviews that were done, the people that had ambassadors or welcoming sponsors, they were able to accomplish and assimilate much faster than those people that didn't have a sponsor. 
And I don't think anyone would disagree with that. It was tremendous work that all of you did for the new residents. So we're back to, there just aren't enough of us. Maybe at some time in the near future, it can be restructured. Um, I certainly would become part of it again, but until then, we've got to see more activity and more help. And all of it, it's not to help management. It's for the benefit of the new residents. And if we all think back, how difficult our move was into the Carlotta, that just maybe it's something that you could assist with too. So I wasn't prepared with anything, um, but I, I do respect and appreciate that someone did ask and give me an opportunity to explain. Thank you so much. Any other questions? Any other questions? Can I just, I'd like to make a secretarial comment about this. As usual, the minutes of the meeting and uh, reports that all the committees will be given to you by email. They'll be available in hard copy if you want. But because there are two things that are so important, the nominating committee and this committee report, I will attempt to have these posted in addition to those that you get at where our usual council things are. Unfortunately, although requests through the year for a larger area to display this in the Casita areas has not been given to us, uh, we'll still put it up so that you can have several opportunities to see these important things. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Well, uh, any other questions? Yes, as, uh, as you've been told, you will all receive the full 10-page uh, report that the uh, committee came up with. Moving on, we have another uh, thing to discuss, and that is the uh, Employee Holiday Gift Fund, which is coming up. And the first thing that the council will uh, discuss is the distribution parameters that we have uh, established for the past few years, which you each have a copy in front of you. Uh, if there are any questions, uh, suggestions, or discussion, uh, let's talk about those for a moment. Yes, I, I'd like to make a comment. I visited with Wayne a little bit, and one of the questions I have is, since we've had some unbelievable turnover of people this year, I, I think of it's going to be a nightmare. He tells me it was a nightmare last year, so was. And one of the questions I have is about the amount for employees from the date of July to the from July to September. I'm wondering if we should think about trying to give those people a little more than we have before trying to make sure we can keep the people that we have. Discussion? Yes, ma'am. I wonder if uh, after we receive the funds, which we hope will be considerable and maybe more than expected, we could re-examine the amounts and uh, increase them. We can do that. We can do that. Um, that leads to the next question, which is in the stated letter that uh, goes out to all the residents, which is the amount that we have uh, uh, used last year was uh, we suggested the amount of uh, uh, $300 uh, per resident. Any discussion on that? The amount? Should we keep it the same? Should it be increased? What's your opinion? Pardon? I said I think 300 is fair. You think 300? We should stick with 300? Mm -hmm. The reasonable amount. <clears throat> Everyone agree? Yeah. Okay. $300 will be the amount. Uh, I know that uh, uh, Ann 
Angela, you sent me an email in regards to having something added to the letter, uh, which was uh, the addition of, uh, because of lack of uh, gratuities. Okay? Uh, do you think that, do you feel that that should be added uh, to the letter, the rest of it? The suggestion I made was that um, there's a statement in the request that you're going to receive, and it says, as you are aware, individuals with gratuities are permitted, pro are prohibited. And I want, I thought, but yet we're going to give them to them at the holidays. So I thought there should be uh, just a qualifier in there, they're prohibited during the year. That was fine. Makes sense. Makes sense? Yeah. We will add that. Yeah. We'll add that. Any other comments or uh, discussion on this? <coughs> Good suggestion. Anything else? So, do I have a motion that we adopt the uh, current plan? I so move. Second. Second. Thank you. Second. Thank you very much. Now we've covered a whole bunch of things today already. However, if there are any additional questions you would like to raise, here's your opportunity to ask us. Do we have any other questions out there? Yes, Jean. I put in a, a work order of a week or so ago that the north elevator squeals a lot when the doors, I mean, very loud. And I thought, is that something the elevator company has come up or, or the track is dirty or something? But I wondered about the motor coming out when I'm in there or something. <laughs> Jeannie's question is if there is something in the north lobby? North El elevator. The elevator that when the door opens and closes yeah. is uh, quite a uh, lot of noise squeaking and so forth and so on. Uh, we will, uh, has anyone, uh, have you put that on a work order to the desk? I did. A Are work order has been placed at the uh, front desk. So, uh, Alan, would you follow up on that for yeah. please? I've Thank you. Doing the same thing. We will follow up on that and see. It's the word of concern. Does. Any other questions? Yes. How many Hold on, Jan, wait for the microphone. How many maintenance people do we actually have now? I think we have two maintenance uh, people right now. Raphael is on a leave of absence because of health reasons. So right now we have two full-time people that I'm aware of, which is Nestor and Manny. Is that enough? Is that enough? I don't think so. I don't think management feels that that's enough. Uh, that's too short of what there should be. Any other questions? Outside of that, thank you very much for your attendance this morning. We appreciate seeing you. Uh, have a great day.